Welcome back to another episode of Rankable. I'm your host. My name is Garrett Sussman of iPoll Rank, and I I am excited. This one's going to be funny. This 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 woman is is she's brilliant and she's hilarious. If you've ever followed her on Twitter, uh, today I'm joined by Miriam Jessier, who is the she's an SEO trainer and consultant. She works. Her company is Pragmat Pragum.co. Miriam, you got to explain like how the heck do you even came up with the name for the business in the first place? But welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, before I explain that, I actually had a test today because uh, Google talks about me when I ask a question. They're like, according to the Pragm.co website. So Google Home in English knows how to pronounce it, but Google Home in French goes, selon P-R-A-G-M. <laughs> like it cannot, it cannot sound it out in French, but in English it can. And it's a French speaking company. So it's a bit strange. That is that is fascinating. And so basically, you, you were just explained to me like kind of the etymology of the name. You're you're currently in Canada, and there were some weird rules around what you could do. And what what was the plan there? So there is a difference between Canada and French Canada. French Canada they have their own rules when it comes to companies. So here we go in to register our brand new company, and we wanted to be called Smart Squids and we got rejected because that's an English name. We are not allowed to use an English name. And we're like, hmm, hmm. Maybe we could go with a French search savant, but it's not as fun and doesn't speak to us. So it's like, okay, what do we do? We have 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Well, let's be pragmatic about this. Let's cut pragmatic in two. They can't say it's a made up word. They accept it. And now we're facing the, nobody's sure how to pronounce it. So it's not as pragmatic as I thought. That, that's that's amazing irony there business naming <laughs> is so hard because it you one thing that i've learned over the years being in marketing is like people are obsessive about the names of their business specifically something as simple as like capitalization and spaces like I, I have so many complexes around um, referencing a company on like a website when I'm writing an article, like if there's a space between the name or not, because I've been corrected so many times just based on like a site. How to spell WordPress. Do you capitalize the P or not? That's how we know the true fans. That's how I've been told to do it. Like it's, it's harsh. And you know what? I think about it differently from an SEO standpoint. Here's my deal. As long as it's short, mm -hmm. rather memorable, and there's no competition, you know what? Pragma is a good name because nobody else has it. That's a, that's a great point. I mean, even in our space, there there's like two companies I can think of that have issues and ha have made big deals about it is both SEMrush and Ahrefs. Because like nobody knows, like, is it for the longest time was like, is it SEM Rush or SEM Rush? And how do you capitalize it? Is it Ahrefs or is it Ahrefs? How, how do you pronounce them? You know what? It's Ahrefs for me and it will stay SEM Rush. I'm sorry, you capitalize it. I sound it out. And frankly, it's, it's something that I find fascinating because I have an SEO conspiracy theory. Are you ready to hear it? Oh, bring it on. So this one. I noticed very, very early on when you go on Twitter, everybody has their name plus SEO at the end. And at this point in time, like my handle is just my name. That's it. That I'm a human being who happens to Same. be doing SEO. And I have a theory that it's basically harking back on top of, you know, the whole SEO standpoint. Rappers, I mean, mixtapes. You had oh, wow. to say your name. You had to say where you were from. You had to, because people didn't know who you were. These mixtapes were traveling a lot. You need to state things to be seen. And when we think about this musical SEO, the best ones for this are ZZ Top. They knew they couldn't be number one in like the vinyl sales section. So they're like, we're going to be the last ZZ Top. A1 steak sauce, same game. So, you know, we're just recycling some old tropes here. Oh my God, that that that's hilarious. And, and it's so true. Like the names you pick, especially from an SEO standpoint, are so important because especially now as we're building out like our knowledge graph and ourselves as like entities, like you, you can't just change a name. That's why like there, there's such the issue like tr traditionally for women where it's like you had to like take the last name of your husband. It's like now for anyone who has a career, it's like that really messes up. Like I understand the, you know, if you want to go like the traditional route, but like 
if you're, if you're, you know, have a career and you change your name, that's going to get a little more complicated with people being able to find you. Anyway, I could talk to you about, like, we can go all over the place, but you are, you're an image SEO nerd. Like you're obsessed with the SEO of images. Like why why is that an obsession of yours? So it, multiple reasons. Um, If we're having a mini therapy session, when I first got started on the web, I was a child and I was making websites. And back in the day, you had to upload everything via FTP. Mm -hmm. And I kept uploading my website and the images were not showing. It took me figuring out that I had to upload the image itself as well, because, you know, my, my little software was putting in the image, but it did not exist on the web. So I got started with this going, how does this work? And, you know, why can't I do what I want? I'm terrible at Photoshop, but I'm amazing at optimizing images because of that. So that's how I got started. Now, the real reason I'm an SEO nerd who happens to dig deep into images. Well, do you know what's five times bigger than YouTube? What's 10 times bigger than Yahoo, Bing, Amazon, and 15 times larger than Facebook in terms of like web print. Bring it. What, what is it? Google images. No shit. Really? Yeah. You can get so much traffic from this. Think about it. If Pinterest exists, there is a demand. Okay. There is a demand. And they did discover, like, I, I was around when Google image came about. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know the story behind this. No. no. Okay, so Jennifer Lopez, way back in the early 2000s, wore a dress. You know the dress, right? The green dress. I know the dress. Everybody wanted to see the dress. Mm-hmm. Internet searches boomed for this, and that this is what spurred the creation of Google Images because, well, images are worth a thousand words, literally. It, it just, You need to see that dress. And for anyone watching or hearing this, go look up the dress it's a really nice dress <laughs> it's it's like sequiny green i mean it it is it, it was the big it's almost it reminds me of like the barbara streisand effect you ever hear about that one yes yes where she said something along the lines of like you know like basically reverse psychology don't look up my house and then everyone tried to like find her house and it's like you know when you almost tell people not to like think about you or not to look at you and then that's all anyone can think about it it was it was such a moment because it it was such a low cut and high cut dress at the same time and still had mm-hmm. lots of materials. It was weird. You try to explain it to your friends and they have to look it up. Today, I mean, well, it's an old reference already, but the gold is a white and gold or a blue and black dress. It's things like this that you need images. You really do. And during the pandemic, I got to play around with images quite a lot mm-hmm. because I became an unsplash, unofficial contributor. <laughs> nice. So, there's quite a few people who meet me and then I show them something they're like, oh my God, I know your image. I used it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a valuable resource. And plus I've heard some some SEOs actually use that as a way to almost embed links and drive traffic or at least drive yeah. equity that way. There's a few. Uh, so just to be very clear, I when I say that I'm an image SEO um person, nerd, etc. It's because I worked for an image compression company. So I can tell you a lot about the technical uh, elements of this and why, for example, Google PageSpeed will always tell you compress your images and your developer goes, but I already did, man, like we can't do more. There's a reason for that. But if we get back to just the, the, the pure marketing side, yes, one day I will be, I have a list where I do the reverse image search and I find all the people who have used my image content. Very yeah. often, all you have to do is, hey, you're writing about online marketing. Can you can you give me a link? You already quote me, you credit me with Unsplash. Can you change that link and point to my own website, please? Thank you. That's, That's Have you done that yet? Because it, it seems like such a brilliant strategy. I haven't done this for me because I'm lazy. Have I done this for my clients? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this this is one of the techniques that I like because you get to actually use images that make sense for everyone and they get reused and additional tip okay very important one 
use the image in your content first. So at least Google knows the first um, um, origin of this image is this website. We know that they are the OG because you know the whole meme economy, things get remade, remixed, end up on different websites. You want to at least give yourself a, a little uh, margin of telling Google, hey, I know some better, hotter, whatever else you would qualify websites are going to be using this image, but remember, I was the one who made it. So you know, I I should know the answer to this, but like, is there any version of a canonical for an image in the same way there is for a website? There really isn't, is there? No, there isn't, because the the way Google will look at this is that the more the image is reused, the more it gains in popularity, and Google is able to match. Even if you crop the image and put a filter, they can tell what the original image was. OK, yeah. So mm -hmm. in that sense, it's not ne as necessary, quote unquote, for them to do this. And that's something that you have to keep in mind because most people don't seem aware of this. So if um, on, on another hand, if you know that Google has a tendency to take into account that, hey, they, they measure the popularity of images, right? Yes. So you can have different compression, different size, et cetera. It still picks it up as a copy. So something that you can do is create a content with a visual, like let's say a dreaded infographic. I don't like these, but that's just me. Uh, my ADHD goes. Mm -hmm. Even if they, even if they work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They work, but my brain doesn't like them. So let's see that. Let's say that there's an infographic. If you post it on your website and then you repost it on Reddit and it gets picked up or if you ask a few of your friends can you reuse this in your content you're quote unquote artificially boosting that image's popularity but remember you're the og for this one so this also contributes so this is this is really really nice if you want to like gain visibility on queries where you have the image search showing up first or at least showing up high up yeah, so. it's really interesting too, because like I think about like video SEO, um, not not in terms of like actual YouTube SEO, but like recently within the e-commerce space, right? They had the product reviews update, and there was this whole recommendation of using multimedia. And obviously, with mom images, are going to become more and more important to include that in your content. It surprised me because you know it's like a affiliate, you know, website might embed someone else's. YouTube video and it's someone else's, but they still get credit for, you know. Oh, I do. I get yeah. traffic. Like I, if we're talking about rankings, let's talk about it. I do yeah. rank on images such as Big Chihuahua on my, <laughs> I have a dog blog for fun and <laughs> I don't own a Chihuahua. I have never seen a Big Chihuahua in my life, but mm -hmm. apparently that, that photo is a Big Chihuahua. So just keep in mind, like even, even using stock photos, you can get traffic. Just mm -hmm. please, please don't leave it as like photo stock dot uh, whatever JPEG. Like, don't do that. I had a client of mine who was a um, huge TV celebrity in a very specific industry, fishing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't get pictures of the fish. So he would go to a photo bank and I'm like, this breaks everything, okay? This is not okay for me to see this. I imagine you out on a boat, okay? Don't don't leave the like, it, like pixabay <laughs> dot like no no mm -hmm. and side note if somebody is using my little technique of like sharing images on stock photo websites yeah. some people won't ever change the name of the file so all you have to do is like search for unsplash plus your name if or the account name and you will find them back easily like it, it it's it's that common that people don't pay attention to images so that's why it's also super powerful and yeah. most people have a tendency to think. Well, that's just for e-commerce. No, B2B. So yeah. let me tell you about this, Garrett. B2B. I have some clients where a picture is genuinely worth a thousand words for them because their engineers are looking for this diagram explaining why they can't plug the thing they wanted to plug in there because it will make everything explode. That diagram is very popular for my client. They're number one on this and it's an image query first and foremost. Yeah. So yeah. you can have a huge article. I'm still sniping this because my image is first and that's what people are looking for. And most people think B2B can't happen. Oh yes, it can. It's very, very good. Well, we know as marketers, how many times have you reused a content cluster visual? Because nobody wants to make those. They're so complicated. I yes. mean, at least for me. So I reuse a good one. I credit the source, but thank you for doing it because I don't want to do it. It's it's it, it's funny that you're doing that because I was just, we've got um, like a webinar that we were 
it'll have run at this point, but it's uh, it's on like content re uh, rebalancing, right? So refreshing your content, same sort of thing. There's so many like decision workflows and it's almost like you're in my head because it was like my first instinct was to like go and find the image and give the source. Like for instance, um, Brian Dean of Backlinko, he works with some amazing visual folks to like, you know, the idea of like internal linking and have that. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and make it myself just because- if it does get picked up, if it does start to rank for the image, I want to, you know, come up with the concept myself and just do it, even though it's so much harder. Miriam, it's so fascinating. I wish we had but more time. Like this you could know be what? a whole hour. Yeah. Just a, just a side note, what you're doing makes sense. So here's another tip. Okay. Yeah. Bring it. When you see visuals that rank well, you, mm-hmm. we know how machines work and we know that Google has a, a, a tool called vision API. So it's looking at images. So what I did during my pandemic unsplash spree is go, I'm so tired of Google Analytics and Google Search Console data. Like it's always one dude in a suit pointing <laughs> randomly or the little white man with a board. So what I looked at is what works genuinely. And then I did some tests. Yeah. You have to recreate an image that is similar to the first results to actually rank better. So what we tested is you need two hands on the laptop. The laptop actually needs to be facing the camera. It can't be on the side. If you have a coffee mug on the side, that helps. I tried with a plant pot. It worked, but not always. It needs to look like it could be a coffee mug, okay? And you need to have the graphs visible on the front of the screen. And these things I figured out because I looked at what worked well, but also my pictures, figuring out what gets downloaded, seen more, used more. So so if you want to go your route, which makes sense, it genuinely can be, um, then make them similar because you are fitting into the archetype of, okay, machine is trying to understand what a human expects to see when they search for this. Let me serve it up. So you're like, I'm ticking all the boxes and doing even better. Uh, it's, it, 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 it makes me feel such a certain way because it's like you, you have this instinct to want to be creative and reinvent the wheel. And at the same time, and also respect someone else's creation and not steal, but you know, it's like any type of SEO content. It's like, in essence, you know, to your point, Google's looking for a certain type of information and you just have to make it better in a way that's like morally, you're not just like flat out stealing what someone else is doing, you know? <laughs> Let, let, let me just challenge you for this, okay? Yeah. If I'm tired of looking at the trope of businesswoman crossing her 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 arms with a sure. laptop next to her, I can't redo this as a spoof parody and still manage to rank. So it's, you can also be very subversive. You can always be super creative. But what I'm trying to say is our job as SEOs is to mediate the relationship between the machine and the human. So of course we need to figure this out. Like there's a common base and then you have fun. Just like being a good SEO, you show why you're good, you have the foundations, but the reason people want to work with you is you have the foundations and that little extra. Same for images. So that that brings me to one last tip. I'm really sorry, but it's a must. Machines try to really approximate how humans look at pictures. So if you can have, if it's not a diagram, if you want to be creative, have a face. Emotional faces Mm -hmm. are what the machine looks at first. And then plants, animals, then objects, then whatever content you can find on the t-shirt, for example. So written content or entities that it identifies. So if anything, let's get back to being good marketers, like old school, we know human faces sell, just emotion sells. It's 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 such a, it's so many good tips. I I really wish I could just talk to you forever. Can can I ask you? So are you ready for some rapid fire ranking questions? Let's go. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so this is fun. You 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 told me that you love a, bu- a bunch of different things, but rank your top three octopi you are an octopi feed yes so okay when it comes to uh, octopuses okay so uh the first one would have to be the dumbo octopus mm-hmm. okay so it's the one that can transform into anything then there is one i don't remember what it's called but it's beautiful and it's super poisonous it lives in the not the arctic but really really cold waters like it's blue and yellow it's amazing and then there is the good old octopus that you will meet, like the, the basic one in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. Like that yes. one, that's the last okay. one. I'm getting see. links. We're going to get images for, for, for the podcast to put on there. Yes. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. There. There's a Dumbo octopus too. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Google it. 
<laughs> there you go. They're bringing it back to the images. Okay, rank your top three SEO tools. Okay, um, so for me, it was um, Google Search Console, Google Autocomplete, and Concatenate in Excel. <laughs> I love that. That's so outside the box because it's like they're really important features, especially the Google autocorrect. Okay, rank your best SEO marketing win that you've had. Okay, my my favorite marketing win, if we're talking like showing off to other SEOs and not to other humans, um, I managed to position a website that has a premium plugin that you have to pay for and their competitors are all free. And we're, we managed to sell. Holy moly, that's that's not not easy. Okay, rank. What do you love most about SEO? Oh, okay. I never get bored. I have ADHD. I never, ever get bored. The second thing is I can actually switch on my brain to do either strategy or technical stuff. It, it always feels like it's a treasure uh, hunt. It's amazing. Yeah. And the third thing is um, I love this job. Like, it's just really nice to go, hey, I actually impact what people see online and positively. I like it. I love that. Your clients must love meetings with you. Okay, rank your best learning SEO resource. Twitter. Twitter. No joke. Any like, I used to waste so much time reading articles, and I know everybody signs up to 20,000 newsletters that are amazing, by the way. But for me, the way my brain works, I just want to know that I have some people that I can talk to that talk about some stuff that is in-depth, nerds like me, and it's amazing. Love Twitter. What, oh, where, where can we find you on Twitter? What's your handle? So my handle is in French at Miriam Gessier. So in English at Miriam Gessier, I guess. But <laughs> I'm reactive. Say hi to me. I love it. Okay, so rank your top one to three SEO or marketers that you most look up to or respect. That's my problem. The people that I actually genuinely look up to, going, oh, that's really smart and that inspire me, aren't necessarily SEO uh, SEOs or marketers in the in the marketing sense. So I'm really inspired by people like Stephanie Walter, who is a UX researcher. She cares about the why. Search intent. This woman can tell it all. The other person that really inspires me is um, Gianna. So I don't know if you know them. Okay wonderful um technical seo if you want to do qa if you want to have systems great and um i have to go with someone who doesn't think she's a marketer but um jamie so jamie alberico is she thinks like a human being first and foremost she's like a bot whisperer so you're always going to understand why certain things are happening but at your scale like you can make it make sense to you so that's why i recommend following these people that, that, that's a great list. And, then, and finally, rank your number one cause or charity that you want to promote. So I have quite a few that um, I, I would want to talk about, but it's a complicated one. So very, very quickly, um, you can donate to anything that you want, but if you want to really help cover Ukraine's needs in real time, please go to come back alive they genuinely do use these funds to cover the needs in real time so what they need right now not what we think they need what is stuck no right now so yeah i uh, we will have the link to that in the description so make sure you find come back live um if you're interested if you want to find miriam find her on twitter she is like i said she, she's a hilarious follow she's always dropping like brilliant hints Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. This has been awesome. It's been really fun for me too. So see you soon. And I hope I'll see more of you listeners or watchers around. Heck yeah. This is Garrett Sussman of iPoll Rank, and this has been Rankable. Thank you again for listening. We will catch you soon. Bye-bye. Au revoir.